Hey guys, my name is Chelsea and I'm here with my mom and sisters because we want to share with you an event that happened on September 13th, 2019. This event has changed our lives forever and we have to share it with you. So here we go. A demonic spirit came up in our sister, Rachel. It spoke out of her mouth and we had to cast it out in Jesus name. Now, just to disclaimer, just to start this off, we have never experienced anything like this before. We never grew up in a church that talked about this, performed this. We, I mean, this is so far out of our range of knowledge, except for we've read the Bible, and that's about it. Um, so we're going to go off, and I'm going to turn this over to everyone else to speak. But just to introduce, this is my mom and Rachel. They're in Orlando. And this was two years ago. So the Rachel you see now is like six inches taller. I mean, she was 13 years old, turning 14 when this happened. Um, I live 30 minutes away. This is important to the story. You'll see later. This is Emily. <laughs> she's in Los Angeles. And she's very important because God used her as the catalyst to start um, basically to get this spirit that we didn't even know was there to come up and reveal itself. So. I'm going to turn this over to Emily because just hours before at three o'clock in the morning on September the 13th, an event occurred that Emily has to share. So you understand why this spirit even manifested in the first place. So Emily, you can just go ahead and just say whatever you want to say. Okay. Well, I'll start off a week prior to, um, this event happening. Um, Chelsea, my sister, she received the gift of tongues. And I thought that was the absolute coolest thing ever. She called me when I was at work one day and was explaining how she got it and that it's biblical and it's in the Bible. And I remember hearing about it growing up. I grew up in a Christian household, but I didn't know that this was something that could happen nowadays. So um, that week I just spent praying and trying to like figure out how I can get this. And um, Chelsea was telling me that she, uh, a way that she got it was to repent. She wrote down everything and she just kind of started repenting from it. And I remember thinking that is not something that I can do. I, I don't want to do it. I'm too scared. So um, I just kind of pushed it off, but I kept praying. That morning on September 13th, um, I woke up and I called Chelsea and I was like, I don't know why, but I feel like I, I need to fast. And she was like, I'm actually fasting. She started the night before. For and, the first time uh, ever. We never had this before. before. And we both did it separately, but together. It was the craziest thing. So I was like, wow, this is this is pretty crazy. So after that night of fasting, when I went to bed, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and this bright light came into my room. It was so bright. My eyes were closed, but I could just feel the brightness all around me. And I just started repenting from things I didn't even know I needed to repent from, from things years like ago. And it just kind of kept flowing and flowing, flowing out of my mouth. And I just started crying and this just bright light was around me. My eyes were closed. And then I started just saying, Jesus, 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 just out loud. I heard an audible voice in my ear say, speak. And in that moment, I just started speaking in this foreign language, this supernatural language, which was tongues. And I was speaking nonstop for about 30 minutes. It was just coming out. And um, it was just such a crazy, powerful moment. And so many other things happened in that evening, but I guess that's saved for another time, another video. But um, that next morning, I was so excited. I was calling my family and telling them. I ended up calling my mom and she put me on speaker with my little sister. And I know that Rachel kind of, she was interested in getting tongues as well. So I was like, let me just pray over you. And, um, you know, we'll go from there. And that's when I started to pray um, in tongues over Rachel. And um, she started to cry. And I, we didn't know what was going on. I thought, like, maybe you just need this moment with God to go upstairs. And uh, I don't know. They were in the car when I called them. So yeah. I can. We were sitting in the driveway, driveway actually. Yeah. yeah. We were sitting in the driveway in the car. And she did that very quick prayer. It didn't last long. And then she just started manifesting, like crying. But I want to. Rachel. Yeah. Tunes, 
let's let's let Rachel speak. But also, okay. I want to say for some people listening, if you know, we're, I'm just trying to stick to like what we know about this from the Bible. So the the language that Emily is speaking, she doesn't know what she's saying, but it's coming out of her by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the words that he was speaking, we know now was commanding the spirit to come up because this is what happened next. So go ahead, Rachel. What did yeah, you So Emily prayed over me and then I, I started crying and it was weird because I, I'm not a person who cries and I didn't feel, I had no emotion attached to it. I was like, why am I crying? I'm not sad. I'm not happy. It didn't feel like that. I, it, I, it wasn't me crying and I didn't know how to explain it to them. So then these guys were like, oh, go into your room, have your God moment. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I, I went upstairs by myself. And then when I went into my room, I immediately collapsed on the floor and I started wailing. And, and I just, I couldn't stop. And I start just screaming and sobbing. And I, I had no idea what was happening. So then mom comes up. Well, I was downstairs. We had... We had lived the whole day going to school. We did archery practice. We had been talking to Emily in the driveway for like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. We came in the house and they said, go up in your room and have that moment. And I'm running around the house kind of getting ready because I'm going to go out to eat with my husband, you know? So I'm very cardinal and I'm starving. This is like 6.20 at night. And um, I, after a few minutes, I'm thinking... Why is she wailing so hard? I mean, it wasn't crying now. It was like wailing. It was like somebody died. It was, I'd never heard it come out of Rachel ever. You know, I've never seen her that way. So I went upstairs to check on her and she's rolling on the ground. She's banging her hand, um, yelling and snot coming out of her mouth and coughing and and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get a hold of Emily because she started this. I mean, I knew it immediately. Emily started this. So I ran downstairs, got the cell phone. Um, I called Emily, but she didn't answer. And then I'm texting her, call me, call me. Rachel's crying and she won't stop, you know. And and then I did the next best thing. I called Chelsea because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do. I really don't. I mean, your daughter's like rolling around to the floor. This is really odd, weird behavior, but I knew it was spirit, like spirit driven. Like, so I called Chelsea, immediately told Chelsea a couple of things of what happened. And Chelsea just went right into prayer. Whoa, and I ran wow. and got a second phone and I was able to get a hold of Emily. So I'm holding up two cell phones in Rachel's Good room work. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking in my head, all right, this will be over in 10 minutes. Cause mm -hmm. I'm going out to eat with my husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I remember hearing Rachel in the background and then I said, put me on speakerphone. And the only reason I assumed that this was, a uh, evil spirit is because literally the couple months leading up to this moment, the Lord was opening my eyes and Emily's eyes. And we were seeing demons having sleep paralysis, hearing them having to come face to face with this reality. So um, that led me to reading more about it in the Bible. And so it was more of just like, yeah, we, we were all kind of on the same page about this. And um, I said, put me on speakerphone and started to command in the name of Jesus, come out of her. Well, <laughs> She starts screaming in this really high pitched, topped out scream. And she says, stop. I, I can't really do it. She's like, stop. It hurts. But really high pitched and just kept screaming, stop. It hurts. And this is freaking me out because I, I don't know if I'm hurting Rachel. And I don't know if this is a spirit talking like they did in the Bible. I mean, all these examples, my goodness, I literally opened the Bible to the New Testament and every other page that I was turning was Jesus casting out demons because it was one third of his ministry. And it's like, this demon is speaking out of somebody and this demon is speaking out of somebody. And he says, spirit, I command you come out of them, you know? And so I don't know if I'm hurting her. Rachel... Afterwards, you told me that that wasn't you talking. So do you remember? I don't remember talking at all. And like me, myself, like I physically couldn't talk. I was just screaming way too much. Yeah, you said it felt like something had come down from your head and it was like stuck in your mouth. Can you explain that? Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of feelings. Like it is like 
a really bad fever and headaches and like I could just feel like there's like a film of like slime over my face and I was trying to get it off and I was just trying like there's a frog in my throat and I just really wanted to cough it up and like something told me it's like oh this isn't going to be over once I get this frog out of my throat and I'm watching her sometimes (laughs) grab her throat which I didn't really like to see yes grab her throat she at moments would be like grabbing up. She's like, I got hair in my mouth. Uh, and she's trying to grab the hair out of her mouth. And, and she's Can just caught. I ran and got her tissues because she's just mucus is coming out of her mouth. Um, Can you say at one point you felt like you had chlorine like in your eyes, Rachel? Yeah, like my eyes were stinging. I couldn't see very well. And it was like very hazy. I remember when we were on the speaker phones at one moment, I was like, go grab uh, some Christian music, put some Christian music on. And I remember Rachel in the background saying, no, 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 um, which was so wow. weird. because it's not her character whatsoever. Um, so, Wait, no. yeah. And the interesting part about that is in my head, I was saying yes. And I don't remember like speaking at all. I don't remember saying like no or anything. Wow. And another thing that you guys were doing, Chelsea Chelsea and uh, Emily, they would like throw out a Bible verse. um, And then they said, Mom, go get the Bibles throughout the house. So I ran throughout the house and got all the Bibles. Tell them when you were rubbing your Bible on Rachel. No, actually, Rachel, you you tell what happened. Like, Mom was rubbing your Bible. So, Mom, she's, I think from a neighbor or a friend, she got the idea of like the blood of Jesus. And like how powerful that is. So she was like, okay, um, uh, you're covered in the blood of Jesus. And she'd, she'd rub the Bible over my skin. And now this Bible is a very nice leatherback Bible. Like it's very, feels very nice. But when she was, when it touched my skin, it, it like burned. Like it, it didn't feel like leather. I was rubbing it from her head to her feet. I was going back and forth rubbing this Bible on her. And because the Bible and she like, was like flinching. It caused like pain. It. So I was like, yeah, trying to get away from it and trying to push it away. And if she handed me a Bible, I'd throw it for no reason. And I want to say, we didn't really know what we were doing <laughs> with all this. Like, yeah. I was clueless. Yeah. I never heard of demonic spirits and people and casting out. I mean, you read in the Bible, but... If you I didn't know what happened. The Bible is a sword, and it really gave it new meaning to us. Like <laughs> that, it was. So, um, yeah, we didn't know what we were doing, and I actually started calling people because I thought this is above me. I need help, and nobody was answering their phone. And then um, I'm starting to feel panicked, and I had this moment of this thought hit my head: You don't need them. You have me. I'm all you need. I have equipped you. And I knew that this was God speaking. This, this is him saying he has given us authority. So, um, <laughs> I Googled it. I Googled a demon coming out of somebody help. <laughs> How to. <laughs> and the first page that came up was this deliverance ministry website. We didn't know anything about deliverance ministry. That's the ministry of casting out demons, which again, Jesus did a lot of, and still is doing today. But it, it said, okay, the person can have snot coming out of their mouth. Um, they could be crying. Yeah, check, check. It can take a while. Yeah, so just so you guys know, fast forward, this took us, I guess we we're a little bit confused on exactly how long it was because I remember it was an hour and 45 minutes, but I think that was the point that I jumped in. So it was actually like two over two oh, hours. Two hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And it's pretty it. quick for a delivery. <laughs> I, from what I've heard, yeah, it, it's it's like an average time, and there are some that are way longer than this, and some that are shorter. Like mine is. And the other yeah. yeah. thing was um, Chelsea kind of ended it because she got in her car and drove up to our house, and it took yeah. her about thirty minutes. But so the whole time she was that. driving, she was on the cell phone talking to us. And yeah. just side note, um, this is the authority of Jesus. This is not the authority of Chelsea. To cast out demons so he doesn't need he doesn't even need us to be there in person um necessarily because remember that was it the the woman that sorry i can't remember was she a 
Samaritan, the lady that came up to Jesus and was begging for him to, to take the spirit out of her daughter. And he had that brief conversation with her. And he said, yeah, the spirit's out of your daughter. And, you know, he did it from a distance. He healed people from a distance and he's given us that authority. So I think that God really wanted us to come together in person because he wanted a kind of a healing process to happen. I know, Rachel, you keep hearing this a lot, but it was, it was just to show that we loved Rachel and she needed to hear and feel that because you, you guys just, you can kind of tell like there's a huge age gap between Rachel and us. I was almost 17 when she was born. So she was really struggling with these thoughts that she wasn't loved by us. And I know that was definitely, uh, you know, attacking her for many years and, um, God was also working on healing her. And in this process, I said over the phone, I love you, Rachel, more times than I had ever told her in her life, just in this yeah. two hour period. Um, it was coming out constantly. I'm saying, I remember I'm not going to let you go, Rachel. We are going to get this thing out of you. I'm not going to let you suffer. We're going to get it out. Jesus is going to help you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I remember, like, you can definitely tell that it was definitely a demonic spirit because I remember a voice in my head saying like, Oh, they're lying. Wow. They don't love you. And for sometimes like I, I kind of believed it. Mm. You know, I I would like to back up a little bit too, to let you know what Rachel was suffering from since childhood, maybe three or four years old, her whole life up to 13, she had um, an anxiety tax that, were um, not normal anxiety, like you're nervous because you're taking a test or something. This was like wackadoodle anxiety where like her hand, she would look at her hand and it would look like it's like, underwater. Yeah, or, like migraines and like just- Nightmares every night. Yeah. Nightmares. Um, fire. And when she'd lay in bed, she'd see the ceiling like moving like, weirdly. Like, and when I remember trying to like- like as a young, maybe like a 12 year old or 10 year old going on the internet and being like, trying to search up what it was. It's like, oh, you're schizophrenic. And I'm like, but I'm not schizophrenic. And like, oh, it's just a normal anxiety attack. And it's like, well, why does it come up for no reason? I mean, we could be driving down in the car, driving down the road and she'd start having an anxiety attack. And there was no stress, nothing happening. She, She was like an eight year old child. It was really weird. And as a mom, I didn't know about these things. Like if your eight-year-old has a toothache, you know, you know to bring them to a dentist. But I I didn't know that she was being plagued by a demonic spirit. And so it was sprinkled through her childhood. It wasn't like it happened every week. But it was definitely enough through her childhood that we were all aware. I think, who was 19 years old? Was it Chelsea or somebody was 19 years old and you started listening to her as a little child? tell her nightmares and you mm-hmm. started okay oh, emily you started um, recording it because you really thought here you're a 19 year old thinking someday when she grows up if she has psychological problems i want the psychiatrist to hear this yeah. i mean it was it was just wackadoodle weird um nightmares mm-hmm. and we didn't really want we didn't watch horror films i mean we we were just like a regular family we you know we didn't we didn't watch any movies that showed exorcisms yeah. <laughs> well, but we're going to go back to the exorcism now. And the moment that Rachel was set free and by the way, um, every person that you're looking at in this video right now was set free by Jesus from our own demonic oppression or evil spirits and, and all, all different reasons, a lot of different assignments that they had. So this one that was attacking Rachel was like anxiety and fear and like that, all that. So I ran into the house and it was really dark at this point, um, outside and all the lights are off in your house really felt like a haunted house. I mean, the atmosphere was different and Rachel is on her bed with her head down and she was so weak. She couldn't even lift her head up. Her hands were limp. She's cross-legged and just wilted. And I run in there with my sword and I, I'm just in my head praying, Jesus, come, Jesus, come. Like, we need you. We need you. I I need you. This is all you, Jesus. And I, I got my hand up and it happened immediately. So I start saying, you know, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And this supernatural thing occurs because this whole story is supernatural. Like, this is all. And the Bible is supernatural. And um, it was like a daydream. 
of seeing a brightness of a figure overlaid standing in alignment with me with their hand up with mine and I hear this voice like this dissonance of a voice overlaid with my voice speaking and together we say by the our spirit I speak to you now by the authority of Jesus of Nazareth I command you come out of her and then that brightness is gone and I don't hear the voice and I'm still repeating it and I remember thinking in my head if that didn't work I'm going to be so discouraged because remember it's been <laughs> two hours now and we want this to be done. It was exhausting. We wanted there to be an end and freedom for Rachel. Um, in that moment, Rachel starts to that blink is. and lifts her head up and me and mom just get on our knees next to her. And we're like, Rachel, is it out? Is it out? So describe that moment, Rachel. Yes. Yeah, it, it was like suddenly it like a weight. Wow. Or something that, like snapped or something. And it was like, I was able to see again. And it's like, my head was clear. And it was like waking up from a very good nap. And <laughs> it, was, it was very refreshing. And suddenly I was like filled up with energy, even though it was like the end of the day. And I haven't eaten since noon. And it's like 8 at night. Oh, 8.30. Yeah, it <laughs> even was late. And I was, I was like, oh. Wow. And then another thing is that at archery, I injured my arm, so it was sore. And then that gone, my arm is healed. It is just renewal. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and to further it, um, all four of us are like, okay, God's real. I mean, we're getting into it, <laughs> reading our Bible every day and taking this more seriously or, you know, and, We've shared it with family members and they're on board. I mean, we're not making this up. This really happened. We have no reason to lie. Um, you know, we're not making money on it on this. I mean, we're just sharing our story in case anyone feels like this might be an avenue that you need to pursue. You know, um, Jesus is an avenue everyone should pursue. <laughs> well, I want to I want to ask Rachel. Um, sorry to interrupt, Mom. That's okay. <laughs> it's really important to look at the evidence of when a person has been set free by Jesus. The evidence is the change that happens afterwards. So what changed, Rachel? Like you told me the next morning you woke up and what was different? Usually when I sleep, I like I used to be a really bad kicker. Like, I'd kick all my sheets off. I was a very restless sleeper, and I usually I'd have nightmares almost every night. So then that night, it was just my my bed, it was, like, completely neat. I didn't move at all, and, like, I slept well. Ever since then, I haven't had a single nightmare, and I haven't had a single anxiety attack. Wow. Yeah. So we praise the Lord for that. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but I also want to caution people, you know, when you do, when you do remove a spirit to make sure you get into the God's word, feed on it, like, yes. like food, because you do not want an emptiness because, well, Chelsea, you continue that with the Bible. Speaks said on that, it. that if you, once, once the spirit comes out, it'll go about the arid land looking for a new home, which is disgusting because it considers you a home but it will go about looking for a new home and it finding none will return to its original home and finding it empty will bring in seven more demons and that person will be worse off than when we started. So we proceed with caution with this because no, there is freedom 100%. Like all of us are free, but you don't want to leave an empty home. And from the best that we can understand what that means is, um, is, from what we understand is your home is empty if the spirit of God is not dwelling there. And that could change for you right now. If the spirit of God is not dwelling there, ask him to fill you with his spirit. He will be more than happy to do that. He says that he is. Um, he is more than willing if you ask for his spirit to give it to you. And you need to have that in the, and then, and then to be regularly feeding yourself on this. And I say feeding because really it feels like starvation. If I, if I'm not reading the Bible, it's, um, it's starvation from God. Also, this is a book I'd like to share with you guys. After the deliverance, we wanted to know what happened, you know? So we found this book a friend of mine gave written it. by 
um, Francis McNutt. And, you know, it's a, a handbook, a practical handbook. So. Deliverance from Evil Spirits, a practical manual. Uh, it's been two years and I still haven't gotten used to that title. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that. Um, but we recommend um, that book. And if you want to hear more, if you like podcasts or like watching YouTube videos, there's two people I recommend that we trust with really, really sound, lots of experience. And that's Derek Prince and Isaiah Salvador. And they're very interesting to watch too. I want to just say like, this reaches farther than I expected, but we don't, we don't believe that every single um, problem that we have is related to a demonic spirit. Not every single illness that we have or anger issue or anything. Right. But from where we used to be, we realize actually a lot more is influenced by the spiritual realm. And Ephesians 6 tells us that our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Right. For demonic forces, it's not spirits of people that have passed on. I think um, there's a lot of confusion with that. But we're not going to go into just um, all the teaching with this. We'll leave it to Derek Prince and Isaiah Salvador and that book by Francis McNutt. They're all very knowledgeable. Um, but these are demons that are ancient. They've been in existence um, longer than we have. Well, longer than you know, you and me, um, they rebelled against God and they, they roam the earth seeking who they can devour. They come to steal, kill, and destroy you guys. That's what Jesus said. Steal, kill, and destroy us. So you don't want to just let them stay. Don't get comfortable and just leave them. Know that there is hope. Uh, for me personally, it was a spirit of anger and I didn't know what to do with that. I, I have, um, a separate interview of myself, uh, sharing that story about me seeing that spirit and then commanding it to go. But did we want to add anything else? I have something yes, Mom. Um, from Mark 929. It means a lot to us because 929 is Rachel's birthday. She's September 29th. And in the Bible, that's exactly, it's the story of the young boy that was epileptic and he had a spirit in him. And Jesus' disciples could not cast out that evil spirit. And they went to Jesus and said, you know, Lord, why can't we cast out this spirit? And it says um, some of these spirits can only come out by um, prayer and fasting. That's the 929 part. And that's what happened to Rachel because her sisters were praying and fasting, not, not for deliverance, but they happened to be doing that activity in their life at that time. So it's pretty supernatural how holy spirit orchestrated all of this this was organic like i did not know anything about deliverance and now i experienced one with my daughter and i see the fruit of that yeah. so and for any believers watching i just want to let you know and also people who maybe aren't really believers yet there's still <laughs> you can change that at any time but um the the really cool thing is that jesus said to us that I have given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, which if you have seen some demonic spirits at night, they sometimes appear in that form. It's really uncomfortable, but um, he, I've given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the evil one. But do not rejoice, he said, that the demons submit to you. Rejoice instead that your name is written in heaven. And um, the verse that came alive for us, and I'll close with this, is Mark 16, 17, which Jesus said, and these signs shall follow those who believe in my name. They will speak in foreign tongues and they will cast out demons. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still casting out demons. So thank you guys for watching our story. If you have any questions, you want to reach out to us, go ahead. And I'll share the links to all those other um, resources in the description. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.